Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children. Wait in the water. God gone trouble. Water. The great majority thinks that Lincoln freed all the slaves. You know, the Emancipation Proclamation didn't affect Maryland. It affected only those states that were actually at war with the Union. So Maryland had to, on its own, abolish slavery. It's, it's quite interesting that people don't know this history. Because we're the state capital. And a lot of history and culture happened right downtown. You know, if you look at the water, Alex Haley, the Kunta Kinte Monument, what happened there, you know, there's no better place to celebrate history and culture than within the state capitol. By 1800, this town, there were almost as many blacks as there were whites. Half of the blacks were free. The families that we know today, the bishops, the butlers, who were free before the war, did very well during the war and became incredibly eminent citizens of the town. On the other hand, freedom came with conditions. You couldn't travel without your papers. It was very challenging for free and enslaved blacks to look at what the others were, were suffering. Now, you can stay here another year, but I say why. You ought to come and enlist so you can fight for your freedom too. There's the fear that, that whatever the forces were that freed the slaves in, in Washington, D.C., perhaps Father Lincoln doesn't feel like he has to free me, doesn't feel like he has to free us because this has happened in the capital city. Oh, Lord, I've done what you told me to do. Oh, this is where it all went down. This is where the actual law was passed. The General Assembly men and the federal troops put together their minds and their hearts and voted in favor of giving equal status to all citizens in the state of Maryland. Highland Beach was founded in 1893, exactly 30 years after the Emancipation Proclamation. It became the first and the oldest African-American summer resort in the United States. Frederick Douglass was probably the most famous person born in the state of Maryland <laughs> from a worldwide standpoint. Frederick uh, played a very integral role in the design and the features of the house. And the most unique feature is that balcony upstairs. And people come here from all over, Russia, Germany, France, to visit this house. Frederick Douglass was a slave born on the Eastern Shore. He used this bay to escape slavery. So he ultimately escaped to Europe, where he became one of the world's greatest orators. The people paid to hear his lectures and to hear him talk about the anti-slavery movement. But he also was talking about women's rights at the same time. So he was quite involved in the freedom of people. So we've been doing quilting parties throughout the state, allowing people an opportunity to tell their story. This only is you could do this, Jill. No, 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 no. Yeah, I yeah. can only do this with the help of all these no, wonderful people. No, no, no. People. Only you can bring all these lives together. <laughs> We're doing a quilt that celebrates freeing of the slaves in Maryland, 1864. And it has moved, I think, all of the folks who've been working on this quilt. This is for all of us, but it's one American history, it's one human history. Wade in the water. The celebration of the Emancipation Proclamation is recognition by all of us 
of how important the abolition of slavery was to the state of Maryland and the country. It's an important high water mark in history, not black American history, in history. We have our own story, a special story that includes my ancestors and so many other people here in the city of Annapolis. My grandparents had the first restaurant to desegregate in the city of Annapolis in the 1960s. So growing up, I was always taught how important it was to reach out to different people and that we come together as one Annapolis. Oh.